So it's 7 January and I want to continue to document um, my process for making my next film. I wanted to start off with showing you the space where I, I do a lot of work out of. Come on in with me and I'll show you my space. I'm actually reading a book about Nelson Mandela and I realized that this space is barely bigger than the cell that he was in. I've been thinking a little bit about that, of like the things that he did in that little small space that I try to say, okay, this is my space. This is that creative space where I go in here that I need to be focused and how do I get the next project going. This board here, I have my goals for the year that I wanna accomplish in 2020. Then I have um, the other parts of the film production process. So you have marketing, distribution, producing, I have development, production, post. You know, born in the 70s, 80s, 90s, it's still so, so analog for me. So I love having the, the tangible thing, goals that I can write on, I can throw away, I can check off. Here I have a, an arrow on the door just as I'm running off. I have to go, go to battle. I can grab my, my bow over here on the thing, grab my arrow and get out the door, get to go, go to battle with. It's just part of who I am, being a veteran and such, kind of helps me remind me that, hey, you can do hard things. Here's my board. I've talked about this on another little video. I have two boards, actually, one right here in front of me, and then you see you see the one behind me. So I have two, two, film, two feature film ideas that I'm working on. Boards are good because I use those quite a bit in my process. Um, I recently just moved, so you'll see some of my editing. I have a little edit bay. So that's really, that's my space. Nothing fancy. We converted this from a little storage space, tore off the paneling, we put in insulation, we put in the walls and ceilings, and then we painted it. And relative that came and put the little AC unit right here in. So summer, stay nice and cool because it's really insulated almost too well in some ways. And then uh, now during the winter when it uh, gets down to the low uh, 60s here in Mesa, that I have a little heater, a little space here that we have. So nothing fancy, but it is that when I go here, I want I want that mentality almost like I'm going into my into my realm, I'm going into my cave, I'm going into that kind of that set apart sacred space where I'm going to create, I'm going to make stuff happen. And so this is where I spend a lot of my creative time working um, on the phone quite a bit, making calls and that sort of thing as well. So just want to give you kind of a environment, you know, your big wide establishing shot lets you know where I'm at, where I'm working from, um, based in Mesa. So I thought that was important for you to know. So when you're getting ready to produce a film, producer is somebody that, you know, you're the creator, you're overseeing the entire life of this project from early, early on of development. Um, you may bring the idea or that li you bring that little seed of what you're going to plant, that little idea, film story you want to you wanna get out there. You start from way back there, whether you're doing that all yourself or you have all these other different hundreds and thousands of people that, that work to do this. A producer oversees that whole vision, that whole arc. I kind of have broke it into a few organizations for myself, you know, departments. Development, pre-production, production, post-production, post -production, um, distribution, those five elements that that project will go through. And sometimes they'll stay in one longer than the other. Um, so the producer's overseeing that. And then I have an umbrella, what I like to call the overarching department that goes over all of that is marketing. You know, how are you going to market this film? What's your strategy? How do you do all of this? So marketing is something that is continually, in my mind, continually should be going on throughout the film. How are people gonna hear about this? Yeah, you build a great mousetrap, but the world's not going to run to your doorstep, as I've heard a lot of people say. And so, in my mind, as wanting to, you know, write with this film specifically, with "Touch the Water," I'm going into the mode of like I'm going to make this film happen. Worst case scenario, it's me wearing way too many hats. The the industry says if you wear more than two hats, it's usually a bad thing, and I totally agree. But worst case scenario, to get this movie made, if I need to produce it, write it, direct it, shoot it, edit it, I'll do I'll do those things. And I've done those things on other of our shows or parts of those things on other of our films. Um, not exactly by choice, but just out of necessity. So in my mind as producer, that's that's the game that I'm going in. This is, you know, I'm I'm burning the bridges. There's no coming at. We're either certain we're even taking over this island. Or kind of like Washington crossing the Delaware. It's like, hey, here we go. Any way we can, legally, ethically, morally, you know, to make this film happen. And so that's where my mindset's at. I think it's important to get to know where I'm at with that's what I'm gonna 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 accomplish. 
And then it's like, okay, how do I set myself up or set the show up so that we have better, you know, I'm, I'm not the greatest DP. I don't even know if I consider myself a DP. Who's the guy that can come in and run, you know, camera? What's that going to cost? What about this person, this person? How big of a crew do we need? How small of a crew? You know, that's a lot of production stuff. What about the marketing? Well, how are we going to find our talent? How are we going to get the word out? Let people know about this film way in the early stages of casting. You know, are we going to let people follow the journey? Are we just going to let people know when the trailer's out and that's the first time the world's going to hear about this film? For me, all I have all this stuff. I mean, this is, you know, working on this. This could be our, our sixth feature film. And there's so much that sometimes you get, I get frozen up because there's paralysis by analysis or whatever the thing is because there's so much to do. And I feel like that's been a part of my struggle for the last five years of not getting another film is because I have a little experience now. I'm really wanting to do a good job to make the film better. I've, I've heard the critics speak and also those speak that have liked our films. And so I'm kind of gun shy or a little nervous about doing something that everybody in the world won't like. Um, and so that some of my fears that I'm working through on this, like, you know what, let's put those aside. And so getting at is like understanding that's in my head. And now when I go to write this morning, I'm going to block all that stuff. I have to like, however I can, turn off the producer side of my head because then I'm worried about budget. You know, if the, if the story is calling for five people, but in my mind, I'm like, I can only have two people. That's all I can afford. That's a, that's something you're gonna have to do with it sometime. But when I'm writing, especially that first pass, I want to turn off that producer. I want to turn off all those other areas and just, you know what, let me just focus on the story, tell the best story I can. And then coming out of the story, then I put on another hat, which is not, it's always as easy. Okay. Now I have this hat on this cause those they're, they're so intertwined. You know, all this stuff, I'm trying to shoot this film at the end of February to get it in the can or in the hard drive now. And so you do things kind of like, okay, I know I need to kind of get this little fire lit over here to start it. So I, I throw that over there and start it and then doing this. And so last week thinking about funding and then all the resources and time and all the other things that's going to add up to the budget as well. And so I'm looking for 10 financial partners that was sponsors or those that are coming in. In my mind, I haven't sat down, I haven't even finished the script yet. So again, it's like jumping the, the process, but in my, in my mind, like trying to look through it all, that I can come in and I can get some key people. Yeah, we're gonna have a very small crew, we're gonna have limited cast. It might be very few shooting days, but I can kind of use those funds strategically and put it where I think it needs to go. But, and that's where the script too. So even when I'm writing, I can't completely get out of my mind, like that producer or that, you know, all of that stuff out of my mind because it's still a part of making this film happen. Yeah, I could wait, write an incredible script, but if I don't have $50 million to do it, this script will never see. And so, okay, how do I cut back? How do I still tell a great, powerful story, emotional story, tears and joy, and you know, people are feeling those emotions throughout the process. And so, so that's the stage that I'm at. And so last week, I sent off an email to an acquaintance that I know and he knows me, which a lot of people say, oh yeah, it's, it's about who you know. Yes, that's a first step, but the second step, which is more important in my mind, is the, who who knows you? Because I know a lot of people. Sylvester Stallone, you know, Mike, Mike Tyson, I don't know why Mike Tyson comes to mind, but all these people that I know, but they have no idea who I am. They don't know me. And so I have an acquaintance. Um, I'm approaching, I sent an email for an introductory meeting with him to sit down. Maybe it's going to be a phone call. Maybe he won't even, maybe it won't even happen. I don't know, but I'm going to start throwing out, going to people that I know, contacts that I have, previous financial partners or whatever to try to help. Like, how do I get these funds or these sponsorships? I'm hoping to hear from him. And when I hear from him, my, my approach is with him is, is, that he has, he has lots of contacts and he knows people. So I'm, I'm literally the one step with him is I want him to introduce me to a few people that he know that may have a little interest in, in helping a small independent film out. So anyway, I'm, I'm telling you that because there's things that you have to kind of start, you know, as you're herding sheep or herding cats, <laughs> more herding cats, you're trying to set yourself up because you know this seed over here needs time to grow to, you, need, you need time to plant it, to water it, to nourish it, to let it grow because you're going to need it at this point over here to be able to have that fruit that's ready to give you that nourishment or whatever to continue your journey forward. You've got to be kind of watering some of those different 
different fields and stuff that you're working in to help them grow, to nourish them along, like casting. Casting takes time. Finding those actors takes time. Finding the right actor takes even more time. And so that's something very soon I've got to get going on, especially if we're shooting the end of February. Then schedules. Scheduling is hard. I worked on a, the Out of Liberty film that we had so many people from all over, you know, Los Angeles, a lot of people from Utah. Scheduling was a nightmare. Uh, if we'd had more days or people would have had more time on, we had people leaving, you know, leaving evenings at a certain time that they had to be done. And so we're forced rush, 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 or we could have spent more time here and short schedules because we only want people for a certain amount of days. They couldn't work longer. We couldn't afford longer. All those different things that really affected that play into making the film. And so all those things take time and low budget, which more time usually means more money. And so we're lots of these tr um, struggles or work that needs to get through is what a producer is looking at doing. And so I just want to get, get you caught up on kind of where I've been for the last couple of weeks, trying to set myself this film up for success, trying to get those little fires lit where I need to light them. Um, but again, all my most majority of my 90% of my energy and effort, as I shared in the last video, is has been to write the script because the script is is the way to go. Without a script, there's nothing. Great friend Jeb Rosebrook was my screenwriting mentor. I took, he taught one class at Scottsdale Community College. I took it the one, and then I was deployed, shipped overseas. That's where I wrote Turquoise Rose. But he was the one that that inspired me, that helped me get writing, gave me, helped me find a little confidence. And he always told the story of when he was in the Writers Guild. He wrote Junior Bonner and some other great, I Will Fight No More Forever, a film I had to watch in fifth, uh, fourth grade and for Idaho history up in Twin Falls. But he wrote those films that he he said, I always told the story that he went on strike, you know, being in the, the Writers Guild for however many years, for a long time that he was. When the first strikes that he went on, one of the signs read, without the word, you have nothing. Without the script, that blueprint, that plan, the story, like all these other elements and resources don't really matter. And so my focus is, again, trying to, trying to, Back of my mind, producer saying, we've got to get some of this stuff going if we're going to get it there. So try and get that stuff lit, get it going, and then pushing all that aside, trying to get it out as much as I can into the writing to get that script. And that's my goal this week is to get, trying to get another two hours. So by the end of this week that I've gone through that second pass and I get that script printed off, that's my goal because then it's like starting to lock in. Like, okay, this is, this is, this is good. Right now there's a lot of loose ends I need to tie up. There's some you know, fleshing out the story some more because um, I have that good backbone, that good foundation that's there that I'm pleased with where the story's at. And now it's going back through there and really kind of fine tuning it and, and creating it into a, just making a great story out. So that's my goal. One other writing thing that I use is um, I've started on the last couple of films, especially with Legends from the Sky, I have a, a playlist, music playlist. And when I start writing, I try to play that playlist um, I try to, you know, I stand up, I'm listening to the music, I'm looking, well, it's this board over here, I'm looking at the board, going through it, I'm thinking of where I was, where I left the script off last, I'm trying to get into that, back into the story, because, you know, things happen, you know, help family and, you know, whatever, life happens outside this door, and so trying to come in here and kind of get focused, kind of zero in, kind of get into some of that deep work, um, you know, turning off the phone, turning off the you know, social media, I haven't done it yet, but even turning off like Wi-Fi to your computer so you're not getting any dings or texts or any of those things that kind of take you out a moment, then it's like, okay, how much five, 10 minutes does it take to mentally get back into that deep level of writing that I need to be at? And so that music playlist helps me. It's kind of the feel of the music or the words are kind of where that the theme of the film is at that it's going. And so I, I really believe by that, that playlist and my music selection isn't really broad, and so I only have one song on this play playlist. And in my mind, it's it's hopefully it's the last song that we you know at the end of the film it comes up and you know takes us into the end credits and and stuff because I think the words and such tie really really well with with what we're trying to do. The final thing is with marketing. So marketing has always been a struggle for me because it's so important and it's so much work. And I'm not <laughs> the greatest marketer. It's another hat that I shouldn't be wearing that we should have marketing team. And that's what we've tried. We've had little bits and pieces of that over over the years on a few projects. But it's like, okay, one week I can afford some people to come in and help with stuff. But but trying to figure out how do I do that? I've had an idea for, for a few years about having ambassadors. 
And so on our Holt Hamilton Films Facebook page, we have a, an ambassadors for Holt Hamilton Film Group. And that is something that I want, I want to collaborate. I want to work. I want people to be involved. I want those people that love our films, that are passionate about what we're trying to do, that get what we're trying to do, can see the heart that we're trying to do these things with, and can join our team to move forward. And I'm trying to create a win-win scenario and so those that are helping, there's benefit for them, there's benefit for us, there's benefit for me, that we just really build a really solid grassroots network, connection, you know, friendship um, across, across the country where our, where our audience and those that enjoy our films are at. You know, how, how do we do that? But really creating, creating this ambassadors that when we have auditions, that I can send a friend, you know, emails to my friends. We can do a little post on this group, group page, and get people like, hey, yeah, we have some people there that can think whether specific, go and find specific people, or they can help us have auditions. We're looking for people who want to sell films in their community, uh, DVDs. You know, there's not a lot of stores in some of the places where our market's at, and so we're trying to find people that, you know, will wholesale our DVDs to them, and they can try and mark them up and make some money. So there's some side cash. So that's kind of that benefit of win-win trying to have you know other opportunities to come and be extras on the film. I'll try to you know I'll reach out to those ambassadors and then hey invite your friends, your family, get some people that you want to be in this film. These are this is kind of the the age group or the people the certain look that we're looking for for this scene. You know, it's in a prison. You have some of your relatives that that look like the you know they could be in prison or they've been in prison so they have some real experience of helping helping sell the scene that we're we're there, whatever it, it is to to really just to have a, a good team that's there, that's supporting us, that gets our mission, um, that's having, you know, that's benefiting from being a part of working with us. Bottom line is to help us, help us make film, help us tell those stories that need to be told. Um, always in my mind that we need to make 12 movies before I really understand what I'm doing and really have that system down. So that's where we're at. I'm getting ready to, to jam into to two hours of intense, deep writing. I'm going to go right through the process I mentioned. I'm going to turn this off here in a second and start my music, get get in my head, almost like your, you know, warm-ups before a basketball game or before you go out on the field to to make some great hits in football or whatever. You start that first pitch in baseball, kind of my mentality being a wannabe athlete back in high school. And so I hope to get to the midpoint. I hope to get to about page 50, at least page 50, 60 today to get kind of, okay, here's half story. And then the next two days to be able to finalize that and then Friday to come back and like, okay, maybe do a quick one more little quick run through, read it real as fast as I can in those two hours on Friday and then print that baby off. So next Monday I'm hitting the ground or even Saturday, you know, probably Monday hit the ground that I have that physical copy of the script and again, do another pass with that and then be on, okay, these, this is who we need so we can start our casting. We can kind of aggressively start going after making this film happen in February if that's if that's when we're going to do it. And, and, and after this next pass too, I'll be able to have a better understanding like, yeah, this is good. Or no, we need to cut a little bit more. You know what? Let's push it. Let's give us ourselves three more weeks of pre-production and push it back and shoot early March or mid-March. Still a good time to shoot um, some of those things, but it still comes back to the script. So there's the update. There you go. I'm, I'm kind of getting antsy, finding myself wanting to get back into the writing. So